everybody, <clears throat> this is Gillianne again, um, and we, I would like to welcome you to Kindy Kids at Home. Um, I was with you a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about uh, making patience and making a little grass man. And I know that last week you had Kathy, she was teaching you, and she talked about two of the fruits of the Spirit, kindness and goodness. Do you remember that? Um, I've got a bowl of fruit here. Everyone knows what fruit is. This one is a banana, apple, grapes, and hiding underneath a banana is a mandarin. Now these are yummy fruits to eat, but we're talking about the kind of fruit that God can make grow in our lives. The fruit that comes from knowing God and knowing that we are loved by him. And today we are looking at a special fruit called the fruit of faithfulness. Faithfulness is like when someone commits themselves to us no matter what, to look after us and love us and care for us. Now, I've got to say your names. I haven't even said your names yet. So first of all, let me say a big welcome to Talia, Ada, Ruby, Jacob, Joel, Zoe, Alexander and Remy. So I'm hoping that we're going to have a lovely time together today. I'm sorry that we can't see each other in person, face to face at Hindi, but um, this is going to have to do for now. So let me just say a little prayer, first of all, that God will bless us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you are the provider of every good thing. We thank you that you provide the fruit that grows on the trees that we love to eat. We thank you that you provide us with our church family and, uh, and with kindy kids and, and with kindergarten and school and all the wonderful things that we have in our lives, mummies and daddies and grandmas and grandpas. So we pray today, dear Father, that you will teach us about the fruit of faithfulness, that you are a faithful God and that we can be faithful as well. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the fruit of the Spirit that we're talking about today is faithfulness. And I think that to understand faithfulness, you would think about your mum and dad in your family, um, or whoever it is who cares for you and looks after you, and you would have to think, what are all the things that person does to show that they love me? That they are always there for me, that when I'm sad, they make me happy. When I hurt myself, they put a Band-Aid on or they make it better or they take me to the doctor. Um, who's always there morning and night, providing for all of my needs, my food, my loves and my cuddles. Well, that's being faithful. And your mum and dad or your grandma, grandpa, whoever, is being faithful to you when they love you and provide for you and give to you every day of your life. So when they do that, they are giving you an idea of what God's like because they do that because God made them to be that way because that's what God our Father is like also. He loves us and he provides for all of our needs. Anyway, today we are going to learn a story, going to look at a video and learn a story about a lady called Naomi. It's a Bible story from a very long time ago, and it's about a lady called Naomi who had some really sad things happen in her life and had a wonderful daughter-in-law called Ruth who was very faithful in loving Naomi when she was in a really, really hard time. Um, okay, well, we have a verse. Let me just show you the verse for today. The verse is from the book of Proverbs and it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Okay, you see these little love hearts here. And this is a beautiful verse. This is a special verse in our family as well. In the story today, you're going to hear how Naomi had to trust God with all of her heart in a very difficult time. So let me just show you a picture. Here's a picture. This is Naomi. She's an older lady. And this is this Ruth, who is a daughter-in-law, and this is another daughter-in-law called Orpah. And then we have another picture here, and you can see that Ruth really loves um, her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she's going to care for her. So there's a picture. Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about the story. The story began in a place called Judah, in a town called Bethlehem. Now Bethlehem is the place where the baby Jesus was born, so that's very interesting. 
Um, Naomi was married to a man called Imelech, but it was a very hard time because there was a famine. Now, does anybody know what a famine is? What happens when there's a famine? Do you know? Well, a famine means that there's no rain and the ground's so dry that it can't produce any food. And it was so very bad that Naomi and her husband decided that they needed to leave their land of Judah and go to another place called Moab where they could live their lives with food and the things that they needed. They had two sons and their two sons met two lovely girls in Moab and married them. Um, one of them was called Ruth. Okay, and uh, I can't remember the other one. Orpa, I think. Yes, Orpa. Um, anyway, when they were living in this land that was a long, long way away, something very, very sad happened because the husband of Naomi died. And she no longer had a husband, but she had two sons and two daughters-in-law who loved her. Ten years after that, something else really sad happened because both of her sons died as well. And so here she was in a land that wasn't her own country. She had lost her husband who she loved dearly. Then she lost both of her boys who had grown up and married these lovely girls, but they both died. And so she had nothing left in the world except her two daughters in law and she said to them you need to go back to your own country i i have heard there's rain and food back in judah i want to go back to my country and uh, and i think you should go back to your families and both the girls love naomi so much and they said no 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 we want to go with you and in the end orpah said okay i'll go back to my my own people but ruth said no i'm going to stay with you and i'm going to love you forever and your people is going to be my people and your God, I'm going to serve as my God. And Naomi was so incredibly happy. And this was a way that God looked after Naomi and cared for her. Now, the story has an amazing, amazing ending. And, and we're going to have a look at a video in a minute. But let me just tell you, it's not on the video, but I want to tell you something incredible. What happens in the story is when Ruth goes with Naomi back to their other country, um, Ruth meets a person called Boaz and Boaz and Ruth end up being in love and marrying each other and what happens is that they have a baby boy and a few years later um, what happens is that Ruth becomes the great grandmother of a person called David and David was related or connected to Jesus so you have to go many 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 years down the track but God blessed the whole world through Jesus, who was the son of God. And so this little story about Ruth and Naomi has an ending that is just so incredible. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy watching the video because we're gonna play it now. Hi kids, how are you today? Do you want to hear a new story? Today, I will tell you a story about a lady who lost her whole family. But she had a daughter-in-law who loved her so much that she was willing to follow her wherever she went to live. A long time ago, in the land of Judah, there was a little town called Bethlehem. In the town, there lived a man named Elimelech who had a wife named Naomi and two sons, Malon and Chilion. One day, a famine started in the land of Judah. There was no food and everything was dry. So Elimelech decided to leave his home to search for a better land with his family. He traveled very far and found a city called Moab. There, they decided to settle and make it their new home. They lived there for some time when a sad thing took place. Elimelech died, leaving behind Naomi and her two sons. So the two sons grew up without their father and married women from Moab, whose names were Orpah and Ruth. They lived ten years together, but another very sad thing happened. Marlon and Shilion also died. Naomi's whole family was gone. She was left with their wives, Orpah and Ruth. The famine in Judah ended, and God blessed the land, so that there was food again. 
Naomi heard people talking about it and her heart was very happy. She longed to return to her own country. Orpah and Ruth loved her so much that they were willing to go with her. But Naomi told them to go back to their families. They begged her, but she would not agree. In tears, Orpah returned to her family, but Ruth was determined to stay with her. Ruth told Naomi, I will not leave you, Naomi. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. With joy appearing on her face, Naomi agreed and they packed up their belongings and returned to Judah together. What an amazing story, kids. Ruth was determined to stay with Naomi because she loved her. Even after she had lost everything, she still wanted to stay with her. Be there for your family and friends, even in the bad times. And we need to love them and be good to them. My time is up, kids, and I have to go. Thank you for joining me today. Let's meet next time for another wonderful story. Back again. I hope that you enjoyed watching the video. Um, if you have a look online, you will see that we've got a link to this picture. This is a picture of Ruth that you can colour in. It's her in the fields gathering things. Uh, so here's a, a coloured picture of the same thing. So if you can, get mum or dad to run off the picture and see if you can colour it in. Okay, so um, how was God faithful to Ruth and Naomi? Well, he knew their needs. He knew Naomi's need before her husband died. He knew that Ruth would be there. He even knew that Ruth would fall in love with Boaz and Boaz with Ruth and then that Jesus would come many years later. So you never know what God's going to do with our lives because your life is just as important as Ruth's and Naomi's. I have something to show you here. First of all, have a look at this. This is a picture of a rainbow and it says, God is faithful. He always keeps his promises. Can you see this beautiful rainbow? The very first rainbow was when God promised Noah after the flood, when he rescued all the animals, that God would never send a great big flood to the earth again. Remember the story of Noah? There's a story of Noah and his ark. Well, I've got something to show you here. Look what I've made. I've made a fruit platter and I've tried to make it look like a rainbow. Do you think it looks like a rainbow? Looks great. I thought maybe when you have your fruit, because everyone knows fruit's really good for you and we're learning about the fruit of the spirit, that maybe you could help mummy or daddy to make a rainbow out of fruit like this. All that yummy fruit. Oops, today. Okay. Right, well, I think that we need to say a little prayer to God. I need to say goodbye. Thank you for letting me share today. Let me say a little prayer. Dear Father, thank you that you are with us, that you are our faithful God and you look after us. Thank you for the families these children come from. Bless them now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen.